you guys are doing pretty well wherever you might be. Today, I want to begin a three-part mini-series on the Sermon on the Mount in COVID-19. Specifically, what are applications we can take from perhaps Jesus' most well-known sermon and apply them to our lives as we are, for many of us, in isolation or at the... At, for all of us doing life a little bit differently over these next few days, weeks, and possibly even months. So let's jump right on in to Matthew chapter 5. A few days later, I'll release footage as I walk through Matthew chapter 6. A few days after that, we'll look at Matthew chapter 7. So with that said, let's jump on into Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse 2. And we're going to look at some of the most well-known verses uh, in the Bible. You're probably familiar with this, even if you're new to biblical teaching. And we call them the Beatitudes. And Jesus is about to share several different uh, uh, verses that really go against the grain on what the world teaches us is true. So uh, a lot of things in the world say, hey, be the best, be strong, be rich. And Jesus is about to flip that upside down and say, no, you know what? Honestly, if you'll be blessed, do these things. And so let's look and see what Jesus has got for us today. Beginning in verse 2, and I'm going to read all the way through verse 11. Here we go. And Jesus opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Um, here's the big takeaway, at least for me personally. When I, when I see the, the Beatitudes in a season of life right now, like the COVID-19 outbreak, man, a lot of us, our, our lives are changing. And for some of us, man, we're looking at our finances and the finances are not going great. And in fact, it may be a scary time for you financially. Some of us, we're looking at us and we're not really sure where things are going in our careers. We're not sure how this is going to impact it. Uh, me personally, if I could just be transparent, I've spent the last five years of my life pouring it into starting a central church in Huntsville. And I, I'm, I'm like, I don't know, like what happens? Like what happens over the next few weeks? What happens if we can't have Sunday morning services? And I'm just like, and all these thoughts just kind of come into my mind. Like, how does this impact us long term? And there's all these things that are making us worried and making us nervous. And Jesus is saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, all these things that you've been looking to for a blessed life, all these things you've been looking to for happiness, uh, strength, uh, wealth, popularity, success, man, those are not the things that lead to the blessed life. The sort of things that lead to a blessed life are those who are mourned, those who are meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for the merciful, for the pure in heart, for the peacemakers, for those who stick their necks out for Jesus, basically. Jesus is saying, you want to be blessed? Do it Jesus' way. Don't do it the world's way. Don't go after all the things that the world goes after. Instead, do it God's way. Now, the reality is, do any of us want to mourn? Do we want to meek? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, I don't necessarily want to mourn. But Jesus is saying it's those people who do these things, those who mourn, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the peacemakers, they're the ones who are going to be blessed by God. And I think if nothing else comes out of this COVID-19 crisis, uh, one opportunity it presents every single one of us is that we get to, in some ways, hit the restart button and saying, hey, I was living for these things, and now I'm almost forced into reconsidering, like, what am I living for? What are the goals? What are my ambitions in life? And I, I just want to encourage you to take a step that I've been taking over the last few days. I want to recenter my goals. I want to recenter my ambitions on living my life for Jesus. And let me, let me, uh, let's go to the next part of the Sermon on the Mount before we wrap up part one. And this is the part where Jesus tells us to be salt and, and light in this earth. Right, let's look what he says. You're the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You're the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. 
Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who's in heaven. My friends, this is an incredible opportunity for us to be light in a very dark place. There are a lot of people who are nervous. There's a lot of people who have lost a lot. Now's the opportunity to be light, to share with others the hope that you have found in Jesus Christ. Now, one of the things that we say that if you're looking for truth, if you're looking for joy, if you're looking for peace, if you're looking for a meaning and a purpose and an identity for your life, it is essential that you find those things in Jesus Christ. And my friends, now is a great opportunity to, to show a mourning, a grieving, a, a very anxious, a very nervous world about the peace and the joy and the purpose that you have found in Jesus Christ. And the reality is, let's be honest, we could be real here. Uh, not only do we need to tell others about the hope and the joy and the peace that we found in Jesus Christ, man, we need to preach that to ourselves. Um, one of the greatest challenges that I have as a preacher is that I, I'm, I'm called even to some degree, like I'm, I, I'm, I'm hired, like my job, my main duty is, is to feed the people at Essential, like, right, just to preach. But one of the greatest things I've got to remind myself is I've got to preach to myself. I can't just preach to you guys. I've got to preach to me. And just like you, you can't, you can't just go be a light to the world. You need to do that. But you also got to be a light to yourself. You got you to speak the gospel into yourself. Remind yourself, hey, the, 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 the way to the blessed life is not success and health and, 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 and power and strength and finances. No, no, no. If you want the blessed life, man, mourn, be meek, thirst for righteousness, be merciful, be pure in heart, be a peacemaker. And in doing so, you'll be a light to a dark place. And that starts with being a, it's speaking light into our own minds and then living light out in this world for a world, for many of people who are far from God, let them see your good works, as Jesus says, and let them give glory to God because of what they see in your life. My friends, if you could do that, if you could be a light to the world and people see your good deeds and they give glory as a, as, as, as a response to seeing your life, my friends, that is a blessed life. That's a blessed life. Go for the blessed life. I love you all. I hope you're doing okay. You can contact me if you need to get a hold of me. Tim at EssentialHSV.com. Again, that's Tim at EssentialHSV.com. If you're part of our church, if you're not part of a church, if you've never been to a church in your life, if you're somewhere around the world, you can contact me. I'd love to talk to you. All right. Be safe out there. I love you guys. And I'll see you really soon for part two of the Sermon on the Mount.